spicy article. A soft place to settle, Clintonville family fosters unaccompanied minors from Honduras. At first, Andy Mocharski was intimidated by the idea of fostering older children, especially those who weren't fluent in English. The Clintonville mother of four adopted children had only ever fostered younger kids who grew up speaking English, and the ones she was about to welcome into her home were a 10-year-old girl and a 14-year-old boy from Honduras. But it was more than that. They were un unaccompanied minors who crossed the U.S.-Mexico border alone. Their mom was still living in a camp there, and their father had been murdered. Although Mocharski was nervous before the children moved in with her family, in November, everything worked out fine. It immediately, they just kind of settled in, Mocharski said. Of the two children her family began to sponsor, the technical term for families who take in unaccompanied minors right before Thanksgiving. The kids oohed and awed over the holiday turkey, re reveled in hiking at Hawking Hills and found joy in the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium and the Franklin Park Conservatory. They jumped on the family's trampoline, went to the local skate park and dressed up with Mocharski's children, Jack Seven, 12-year-old twins, Noah and Adam and Caroline, 16, asking Mocharski to draw lightning bolts on their foreheads and sang spells, magic wands and hands, just like Harry Potter. They're just really normal kids, Mocharski said. They love to do normal things. The children, who are not being identified out of concern for their safety, crossed the U.S.-Mexico border several months before the Mocharski family met them. They were sent across without their mother, who remained behind in a camp as part of the Trump administration's Remain in Mexico protocol for those seeking asylum in the United States. Their father had been murdered by gang members in Honduras, causing the family to flee north in hopes of finding safety in America. Mocharski said. Kelly Porter, a Columbus native who began volunteering at the border in 2019 when the Remain in Mexico policy began, was the one who made the connection between the children and Columbus. I knew the mother from the camp and like many parents with despair, they sent their kids ahead to family or friends, said Porter, who is the founder of Love Without Lines, an organization that assists migrants at the border. Mexico, especially border towns, are not safe places, and at this time, there were a lot of kidnappings going on, so the mother sent them up to be with friends in Houston. Since October 2020, more than 47,000 unaccompanied children have crossed the border, according to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Under President Joe Biden, children are being allowed into the country, but many adults are not due to COVID-19 related policy began under Donald Trump in March 2020 and continued by Biden. Although the children's story of crossing the border alone is a common one, lately these children's path once they enter the United States is not. Once unaccompanied minors enter the country, they are taken into custody by Customs and Border Protection and then transferred to the care of the Office of Refugee Resettlement, according to the federal agency. From there, a sponsor is located to take care of the children until and if they can be reunited with their parents. Most children crossing the border are coming to live with someone they know in the United States, said Mocharski. They are placed by the ORR first with a parent or legal guardian, or if that's not possible, with a close relative. The last resort is a distant relative or an unrelated result or adults, such as Mocharski, according to the ORR. Some children stay in ORR custody for long periods of time. There's somebody's didn't work out for them, Mocharski said of the children from Honduras. Their mother begged Porter to help in any way she could. She came to me crying one day. So I called my friend Amy, Porter said, coming to Columbus. Amy Bradley of Clintonville and her husband Chris organized a, a way for the kids to come to Columbus and stay with the couple and their own two children. 
The kids are going to end up basically in foster care, perhaps separated, said Bradley, who is the back who has a background in social work and was able to get clearance from Children's Services in Texas to send the kids to live with her. It was an emergency situation and we knew we didn't want them going into foster care with the possibility of being separated. They lived for three months with the Bradleys before moving in with the Macharskis after Bradley's mother-in-law got COVID-19 and needed more care from the family. The Macharskis live, lives have been changed by welcoming 200 children into their home for about six months, Mocharski said. This has been something we're going to remember forever, said Mocharski, adding that the children will finish out the school year before going to Texas to be reunited with their mother, who crossed the border recently and is now in the process of seeking asylum. Mocharski said she first learned about the kids in early November when she got a call from someone at the church the family attended. First, Unitarian Universalists on the north side. Jan Phillips, facilitator for the church's racial and immigration justice group, told Mocharski that there were two children who needed a new place to stay. Would the Mocharskis take them in? At first, Macharski said she tried to find anyone else to take the children. She already had four of her own, and the family lived in a Clintonville home with one bathroom. I wanted to make sure wherever they landed, they were going to get the best care, Macharski said. Then she talked to her husband, Jim, and she said that they knew deep down that their family was probably the best place for the children. We need to know how to get settled and knew the steps to give kids a soft place to settle, she said, adding that all four her own children were fostered and then adopted. Once you've done it, you kind of know. As they became more comfortable in their new home, the children also began to share some of their trauma and grief with the family, she said. The boy often wanted to talk at night using Google Translate to communicate his feelings to Macharski, though his English has improved since he arrived. Losing their father and being separated from their mother has been hard on the children. We kind of had to take it day by day, hour by hour, Marcharski said. I felt like I needed to protect them. The whole experience has become a way for the Mocharskis to show their own children their value, she said. There's always room for somebody, she said. There's enough love to go around. When the family took the kids in, they didn't know about their histories or the trauma they had faced in their home country or during their journey to the United States, she said. Right away, Mocharski found the children a therapist. Her family started learning Spanish and Caroline gave up her room for a small alcove off the kitchen so the siblings could have their own space to share. Caroline said she has enjoyed having other, the other kids in her home and it has taught her to have gratitude for what she has. They came here and they're like, meat, you have meat, Caroline said. They were just very excited. She remembers going grocery shopping with them and they wondered they, why they experienced at all of the options in the store. First, Unitarian Universalist members donated gift cards and meals, and Mocharski started a GoFundMe page to help purchase things the children needed, including clothing and health care, since they do not have insurance. The ongoing fundraiser called A Healthy Home for Unaccompanied Minors has a goal of $30,000, and Mocharski wants to send the kids to Texas with whatever else is raised. Two weeks ago, the children got to see their mother, who came to Columbus and spent a week in an Airbnb with them. They are finishing the school year in Columbus at Fuji's Academy, a private school for refugee children on the northeast side, before they go to live with her and be a family once again. In the meantime, Marcharski has been happy to welcome them into her family. I feel like we were in the right place at the right time for these kiddos, Marcharski said. Your questions are, what is the main idea of this article? And what are some struggles the children from Honduras and their sponsor family go through? 